Take Command Podcast. I'm Craig Hoffman. He is Logan Paulson. And it's time to talk about Lamar Jackson and his Mm. friends and how the commanders can try to contain one of the most potent offenses, who, by the way, is coming off a mega week against the Cincinnati Bengals. Needed every single yard, every single point to get to overtime. And then ultimately they they win after they get kind of a fluky opportunity, a bad, a yeah. bad snap uh, that, that sets up an opportunity. But they took advantage. Credit to them. Derrick right. Henry gets out for 50 yards. And then Justin Tucker, that's chip shot for him. Uh, so they, they come off the win. Um, what What... Like Lamar is the obvious answer here, but like, why is Lamar so dangerous? What about him is is so unique? And um, what if you're Joe at Junior? What are you trying to to shut down to and, and kind of like force them into the box you want, and then pray that Lamar doesn't blow up that box? Yeah. So I think this is going to sound insane, uh, but when you watch the film, specifically the Cincinnati film, I think. The one thing that I, if I'm Joe Witt that I take away from that game is I'm really, 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 really trying to stop the run. Like that is yes. the first and foremost thing with this team. And that's, and, and people hear that and they say, oh, well, Lamar's a good passer. Yeah, I know he's a good passer, but they are an excellent team at running the football. So basically the, they're so efficient at running the football. It basically replaces all of their like quick game. There's no underneath passing attack really here. It's just like I can run zone read. I can run GT. I can do like a little jet sweep to Justice Hill. Like I can do whatever we, any run you think of, like we've got it in. I can put Patrick Ricard in the dot. We can have two tight ends in and we can dent your face mask. Like they do a lot of stuff, put on a lot of, a lot of different hats. And I think, you know, I was talking to Dan uh, Quinn yesterday on the game plan show where he kind of previews the matchup the, the, the morning of the game. And he was saying, you know, that's one of the reasons training camp is so important. I know everyone wants to hear it at training camp, but it allows us to kind of talk through, 21 runs, uh, 22 runs, you know, sub runs, zone read, RPO, all that stuff. And so we've touched on all this stuff because of training camp, but we need to make sure we know it really well because they do it all, right? And I think that's the thing that is really overwhelming about the rushing attack is, is it's so diverse. But I think when you look at what Cincinnati did, that's take something from that book. They were They were basically like, How many people can we put in the box and feel good covering? Like, let's do that. More. More people. You from the stands. Let's come in here. Stand near the line of scrimmage. And we're going to blitz. We're going to line stunt. We're going to make it hard for you to kind of get consistent looks. Because the other thing about it is their offensive line is starting to kind of figure it out. I think that's another reason their offense is playing better. Daniel Falele, that big guard from uh, Minnesota. He played tackle. He's 6'8". He's 400 pounds. I came on a double team with Tyler Lindenbaum is scary. Tyler Lindenbaum is one of the best kind of move centers in the NFL. Ronnie Stanley starting to play like Ronnie Stanley again. They've got a lot of kind of interesting things. They moved, um, what's his name, Makari, their backup tackle, who is kind of their jack of all trades. He's starting at guard now for them. And yeah. the production has just been so much better with him in there. Uh, um, Rosengartner, then, yeah, the, the guy from Washington. Yeah. UW, who we all like coming out starting to play good football for them. So it's all kind of happening for them up front. And I'm just basically like, put more people in there, put more bodies in there. Because the two guys on the right side are good athletes, uh, Falele and Rosengartner, but they do make mistakes. They gave up a safety to Cincinnati last week on a, on a mental mistake between the two of them. So I look at that and I say, that's got to be priority number one. Is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. But that's priority number one. People say, why? Why do you want to do that? Lamar diced them up in the second half of that game. I get it, but the one thing about Lamar that you see when you're watching the film is it's not like this super great rhythm and timing and we can just dink and dunk and dissect you down the field. He finds big plays, explosive plays, but it it takes a lot. He's got to scramble around. He's got to look down the field. Guys get open late. I would prefer that because there's more variability there than Derrick Henry running for six yards a pop. Like I, that's just my thought. I don't 100%. want them. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so that's where I yeah. get to is you got to stop Lamar running the football because he's such a driver of that and hope that you can kind of mathematically sway your option in this more high leverage passing attack that they have. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I I agree with that. And you know, Hey, if Lamar's going to have two weeks in a row where he finds seven big plays, like, Okay, he's Lamar Jackson, two-time MVP. It's not off the table, but I'd rather that than set hut, turn around, hand the ball to Derrick Henry. Set hut, turn around the other way, hand the ball to Derrick Henry, this time with Patrick Ricard in front of him, a 300 
whatever pound fullback smashing people's face in. Okay, now uh, fake a handoff to Henry and, and Lamar's on the edge and, and he's right. got, you know, Ronnie Stanley out in front of him. Like, it is a nightmare um, if, if you're going to do that stuff. And so I would much rather that. Plus, I think there, there are opportunities for turnovers with Lamar as a passer. You have to be super disciplined. He does not take sacks. Um, it is crazy, the sack to pressure percentage. He has been pressured. I think it's, let's see, where is it? 50 uh, times. 50, 50 is 52? it 51, 51 pressures. Yeah. He's taken five sacks. 51 pressures, taken five sacks. So you have to be really disciplined. But if if you can get him to throw, he makes bad throws like from the pocket. Has he grown and does he see the field way better than young younger Lamar? Yes. Was some of that always overstated because of how athletic he is and people just wanted to look at that and assume he couldn't play from the pocket? Of course. But to pretend like he is at, he is um I don't know, uh Tom Brady who can also run is also a fallacy. Like that's not who he is. Right. And so you watch some of these bad throws and it's like, well, dang, if you can pick off one or two of those, like it changes the entire complex of the game, the entire framework of the game. And so I think that you have to be on your toes for opportunities when you when you rush him and and then force throws. And I think the other thing that really stood out in a couple of these games, uh specifically like the the diff the one that stood out as different was the Buffalo game. They got no pressure on him. And if you let him sit back there with no pressure, he will he will be Tom Brady from the pocket. That's he's an NFL quarterback. But if you can get some push, even if you don't pre, you if you don't hit him, you don't sack him, whatever. But you just make his feet uncomfortable. You make him you know change the arm angle in a way that he doesn't want. Make him you know kind of feel uncomfortable. That's when he'll throw high. And if he can throw over a receiver right into the arms of a Quan Martin, like sick. There's your pick. Get two of those, and and you've got yourself a great chance to win the football game. Yeah, and I think when you look at the the Cowboys game, when you look at the Bills game, kind of their two most physically dominant wins, like he threw for under 200 yards. And I think that's where they want to live. Like, like if I if I'm if I'm the coach, I'm saying like this is this is who he can be because of and again, he it's not like he's not playing when they're running the football. He's the he's the engine that drives their rushing attack because it adds so much flexibility and diversity. Like obviously there's we talked about you know, Picard and, and Henry and being physical and being big. And there's some absolutely disgusting plays of Picard just <laughs> killing a safety. And then Derrick Henry stiff arming some guy. And you're just like, they don't play football like this anymore. And teams aren't built to stop this anymore. But then in this, the next, the next play is a, a fake handoff to Derrick Henry, a fake reverse to Justice Hill. We're running GD to the offensive right. And Lamar, his, I don't know what he ran, but he looks like he's running a 4-2 out there and runs for 15 yards for a first down. And you're just like, how how do we match this? And so when you watch him versus Cincinnati, when you watch him when he's a little bit stressed out, because they were down going into the fourth quarter there and he had to do some pretty miraculous stuff to get them back in it. And credit to him, he did. He did it. Like, and, and so we're saying like he is good at football. He's an excellent football player. He can throw, he can run, he can do it all. But when I watch him, I see a guy who's mu an offense that's much more efficient when they're efficient running the football. When he's got to get back there and throw, he it's not on time. It's not. I don't think he does. It's not, this is not to say he doesn't see it well. It's just kind of a little bit out of rhythm and a yeah, little bit. I of mean, it, the receivers aren't great. That's, like, yeah, and, and I was Flowers just about to say that. Good Bateman, like, by the way, who's banged up and might not even play in this game. Like he's he's okay. Yeah, so I was just about to say that, like, and this is a really kind of fundamental, like, nerdy football thing, is their best players are the tight ends. Charlie Col Kolar, Isaiah Likely, Mark Andrews, right? Like, those are the guys. Zay Flowers is a good piece. What they do a good job of with the run game is stretching you horizontally. When you watch them, they have a really, really hard time because they don't have that dog-wide receiver of stretching you vertically. So everything gets a little bit tight near the line of scrimmage, especially if you can't run the football. All of a sudden, the windows get small. The timing's a little bit weird. You got to hold the ball a little bit longer because you're waiting for Isaiah likely to run this deep crosser or attack the seam, and it's different. And so versus the Bills, I thought they did a good job of using Zay Flowers, not as an underneath kind of screen option guy, but kind of get the top off the defense a little bit, and it created more space underneath. But they don't do that all the time. And so... I, I prefer because the passing attack is not, it's good, but it's not the Cincinnati Bengals. Take away the run, force them to throw. It's still hard. It's he's still right. an MVP caliber player. It's, it's the best option, even yes. if it, you would never like. If you could pick the Browns uh, pass game to play against, you pick that <laughs> eleventy times out of five. 
<laughs> like it's we understand what we're saying here. It's just like you got to pick something, and yeah. that's what you'd pick. Yeah, and um, I think that's that's uh, yeah, that's ultimately what you get to because again, it's not always on time. It's not always on rhythm. It's not always the most accurate. But he, can he still make explosive plays? Yeah, like I, yeah. I mean, I've watched that play. That the play where he stiff arms Sam Hubbard twice and delivers it to Isaiah Likely is maybe the best football play I've ever seen. He's like the one player in the NFL currently that can make that play. Yeah, so obviously, like he's going to get his, like no matter what you do. But in terms of just easier, relatively, and both things being hard comparatively, that's the one you're choosing. Yeah. Two uh, two more things, real quick, that I wanted to hit on. Um, one is that. They are really conservative on first down because when you can rush for six yards a carry, which is, by the way, what they're averaging as a team this year, 6.1 yards a carry is that? through five games is nuts. Um, so they just run the ball a lot, but they also play action off. Like first down is going to be a run or a play action, which also kind of sucks because even if they run it eight <laughs> times, those that play action could be the one that kills you. Right. Um, so good luck guarding that. But like it does leave them into some second and longs and then ultimately some third and longs. The thing I think is interesting about that is they are ridiculously aggressive on third down. Yeah. Like they will sit because Lamar is so good at not taking sacks and because he has such a knack for generating big plays, especially on the second play, if you will, when the play gets extended. They'll run guys vertical on third down, and almost it's almost like you know when you watch a quarterback who's a young guy who doesn't know what he's doing. Except for this time, it's like Lamar knows exactly what he's doing. It's just that the receivers aren't going to get open in the first concept. So it's like, wait, okay, it's been three seconds. Let me go extend the play and run around. And he's the best at it in the whole league. If there's a ton of space, he'll run. If not, he will you know run around and then find someone late in the down. Um, and he can throw any arm angle. He'll throw it as he's you know, leaping out of bounds back across his body and find a completion. But they they will create that space on third down vertically, which again, not only you have to cover that because he will make those throws down the field, but if that pulls your coverage players away from the line of scrimmage, that's where he gets a ton of huge scrambles on third down. So I think that's an interest. like third and long is not a safe space against the Baltimore <laughs> Ravens. And that is, uh, that's a terrifying proposition. Yeah, and I think it speaks to how good Lamar is and the problems yeah. that he presents. You know, you mentioned he's not taking a lot of sacks. Like his ability to create that second reaction throw is special, and so it's tough. This is this is a tough team. This is this is the be- I don't know maybe Tampa Bay. This is a this is a good offense though. This is a good offense. Well, you get the version of Tampa that that Washington got, and like that's tough sledding because Baker when Baker's on, he's. He's he amazing. thinks he's Tom Brady. Yeah. Um, and you're like, ah, sure, you can throw the ball in any window and just fire it in there on time, on target. Mike Evans played like a god. Like, it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, from the week in, week out, what you'd expect, I think this is the best one. And the last one, a matchup that um, scares the, the daylights out of me. Um, and I was talking to to my guy, Ben Solak at ESPN, about this on the radio the other day. And he talked about the variance in the passing game. He's like, some weeks this is a Flowers week, some, teams, some weeks yeah. this is an Isaiah Likely week. And he th- said, sometimes it's a Justice Hill week, and I think this will be a Justice Hill week. I don't know if you're Washington, like who the best matchup is, if you're going to go man-to-man and send some pressure and all that kind of stuff for a running back like Justice Hill. Um, like Bobby Wagner, for all of the greatness that he has, you're not necessarily wanting him on a running back in space. Do you want to take Frankie out, and is that his deal? Do you use one of your safeties? I, I think... You know, in these man-to-man situations, it's like against Buffalo, they get him on a linebacker, double move, touchdown. You know, yeah. in the in the high red, so they're, they're they know how to use him as a really dangerous weapon in the pass game, and I feel like it's worth mentioning because that is where some of their explosives come from. And I don't know what the best solution is for Washington there. It's a great point, and this is where it's hard playing defense because my initial my initial reaction is like just play dime. You've got enough really good coverage safeties. Like Percy Butler, I think, could cover with him. Yeah, I think he's smart enough. Yeah. I think he's intuitive enough to get it done. Problem is, if you go dime, like... Now, how you, okay. How yeah, you Derek Henry's the in there, too. They, they'll just go 22 personnel and kill you. Yeah, how are you going to stop the run? Uh, and I think uh, those are the problems that this team... And even if you don't go 20... Let's say you go, like, um, what is it, 10 or 20 personnel, where it's two backs in the game, and one of them's Justice Hill and one of them's Derek Henry. Like, yeah, you still no have to stop ends. Derek yeah. Henry. Like, yeah. you still have to do that. And so that's that's one of the issues that this defense, this offense presents is they do have enough people and enough talent with a good offensive line and an excellent playmaker quarterback that you're always going to be a little bit shorthanded. But I think the thing is, as much as third down is not a safe space, you want to get them in second along, third along as much as you can. And because it limits 
and they're still going to run the ball because they can get big chunks on second and 10. They're still going to do right. all the stuff that you're trying to stop them from doing. But you want to kind of make sure that you can tip the deck as much as possible in those situations. So I do feel comfortable playing dime. I do feel comfortable putting Frankie Luvu in a rush spot because I think he can win a one-on-one. If it's first down or whatever it is, and they are inconsistent, good down in distance, like everything's on the table for them, it's going to be really hard to kind of dictate and, and get the personnel and kind of, again, tip the deck the way you want it to be tipped. Yeah. Um, for whatever it's worth, Washington, uh, one of the worst EPA per rushes in the league still. Um, they're, they're obviously have given up a lot of explosive plays, but they're also top five in the league in stuff percentage. So mm-hmm. they'll give up 30 yards and then give get you a minus two. Um, and yeah. so, you know, can you, can you eliminate the big ones? Can you just, you know, they can get you to second and 12, but then on second and 12, if they run it again, like don't give up 20. Um, yeah. so, you know, easier said than done. Like, duh. Thanks. Good. Good job. Coach Hoffman <laughs> nailed that one. You're ready for a DC job. Um, <laughs> like that is kind of the, the balance that Washington has walked this season is like, they will make plays, but you can't give up the big ones. And so they've been better about it uh, over, week over week. Can they do it against one of the absolute best? Uh, we'll find out on Sunday. And that's why this game is going to be so much fun to watch. It's going to be so much fun to watch. So I can't wait for it. You'll be on the sideline uh, and we'll be talking about it on the tape on Tuesday. Uh, we'll have an instant reaction show for you uh, 730 on Sunday night on YouTube live. Uh, I'm not sure who's joining me for that one yet, uh, but we are going to do that. I don't know, Logan, maybe you'll be home in time. It's maybe. 7, 730. Yeah. Um, we can... You know, we, you and I will talk. Maybe yeah, it'll we'll be talk. Logan. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but but it will be because we will go road game timing, if you will. So it will be 730 live on YouTube at the Team 980 at 1067 The Fan. And then we will get it in your podcast feed on the audio as soon as we can after. Uh, other than that, uh, big week still to come. Uh, we're recording this Thursday morning. So two shows left on the radio for me. Uh, got a, uh, some good stuff, including Commanders receiver Deami Brown joining the show at four o'clock today. Um, I'm working on some other stuff. Uh, big, big guests as well. Um, potentially either today or tomorrow. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. Of course, Logan uh, talking with with Tana and Smoot and everybody over on their stuff with the Command Center podcast and everything else Logan's doing on the Commander's page. So check that out there. And we'll see you Sunday night back here on Take Command. Thanks for watching this clip of Take Command, which has a brand new home. That's right. You can watch on YouTube at the Team 980. You can also listen to full episodes in the free Odyssey app, which is now enabled with Apple CarPlay. So we'll just, you know, follow you around.